Prof uh, Dr. Mak Kamil bin Ashad graduated with a degree from in civil engineering from Curtin University of Technology Perth Australia and also he has two master first master in technology management from Deakin University Australia and then master another master in highway and transportation engineering from University Putra Malaysia UPM and he got his PhD in civil engineering from UITM. He has more than 20 years experience from 87 until 2009, civil engineering Dahti with various organizations, including JKR, civil engineering contractor, TRC Senyam Berhad, project management pun ada, pengurusan lantas Berhad, and civil engineering consultancy firm. Oh, so in 2009, he switched to UITM. So about 11 years in UITM then, but total about 30 years plus working in this field. He, when he joined UITM, he became associate professor, highway and transportation in the Faculty of Civil Engineering, and his career research focused on environmentally friendly and sustainable asphalt material, mechanistic payment design and rehabilitation mechanistic. Okay, sustainable transportation and traffic engineering. He is also a registered professional engineer, PE, corporate member of RIM, Road Engineering Association of Malaysia, and fellow of IEM. He has served uh, as council member of IEM and various standing committee of IEM. Okay, I think that's about it on his uh, background. The two speakers are actually from ISM. Okay, Dr. Eka is currently a lecturer in Faculty of Civil Engineering and Principal Researcher at ISM. She graduated his, she graduated Master and PhD in Civil Engineering from UITM. She has about 11 years experience in teaching and research consultancy, the training and various organizations in Malaysia. She also has served as reviewer for international journal and local symposium and conference. Her area of interest is in highway and traffic engineering, particularly in the area of pavement. Her research focuses on sustainable and green materials. So what does it mean by this sustainable and green materials? It is actually consisted of polymer, nano polymer, recycling asphalt pavement and modification of bitumen or modified bitumen. And also in transportation and traffic engineering as well. She is a member of IEM and also bought and also BEM members as well. So both of them are currently quite active in doing consultancy with regard to pavement. Either they can do the training at the lab and also do some testing with regard to the material. It is brought from many various organizations as well. So if you have any question or you want to see much further, you can ask them personally afterwards. But you can also open the ISM website as well. We have, uh, I think, we have uh, quite a lot of facilities to be offered so that you can use it and do some research. So without further ado, I would like to call upon Professor I.R. Dr. Ahmad Kamil to start his talk. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you to uh, Ms. Chairman. Uh, today, I will just give an overview of structural design for flexible pavement. Okay. Uh, I will not go in depth because we have only 20 minutes. So uh, not to waste our time, uh, this is what I'm going to present. Uh, some uh, what are the design concepts in pavement engineering, structural design consideration, design approaches, mechanistic, empirical, flexible pavement design method, the inputs required for design, and also some uh, notes on the software for mechanistic pavement design. So to start with, uh, I'll just uh, provide you some design concept in engineering. There are two types of design actually in uh, pavement. One is structural design and one is uh, mixed design. So I'll be talking on uh, structural design while Dr. Eka Rizan will talk on mixed design. So what is structural design? It's just uh, uh, to determine the structural layer composition and also the layer thickness for each uh, layer of uh, type of material uh, used in the pavement. So in short, it's just the determination of what uh, the thickness of each pavement layer in uh, each pavement layer, such as, such as how thick is the sand required, how thick is the crusher run required, and what is the thickness 
of the asphalt uh, material on top of the uh, crusher run. Whereas uh, for mixed design, uh, which will be taught uh, by Dr. Ekarizan, uh, is the determination of uh, what is the amount of bitumen to be mixed with the aggregate. Okay, so uh, my focus is on pavement design. So what is the uh, objective of uh, pavement structural design? Uh, th these are the following objectives to provide a strong pavement structure that can uh, that can be used by vehicles. So you need to have surface strength and you need to control moisture because moisture affect the lower layers uh, and will soften the, level, uh, the lower layers. And then you provide a surface that is smooth so that you have a comfortable uh, ride on a vehicle and uh, is, uh, you need to have a safe surface, you have adequate friction and also you have uh, adequate drainage so that you don't have uh, any skidding due to hydroplaning. And then the, the last one is the econ uh, economics. You need uh, to have an uh, 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 optimal cost for the uh, pavement structure. Okay, uh, so just a review back to recap uh, what are the pavement layers. Normally we have uh, in Malaysia, we have uh, three layers, surface layer, base layer, sub-base and sub-grade. So these are the three uh, uh, pavement layers which we uh, have to design is the sub-base, base and surface. So uh, the function of each layer is given on the slide. Uh, for example, for the surface, it needs to be, uh, the property needs to be very strong because it interacts with the, uh, directly with the vehicle. And then for the base layer, uh, it spreads the load from the surface. So it, it needs to be strong. Uh, it's normally manufactured because uh, it is uh, derived from crushed stone and it is less expensive. And uh, the third layer normally we use is the sub-base, which is normally sand. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it is of a slightly lower strength or moderate strength and is um, normally less expensive. Uh, these three, lay uh, three layers will protect the weak subgrade, yeah, which is uh, the uh, earth formation on which the pavement is, uh, is constructed. The second aspect is uh, what are the factors we need to consider when we design pavement. So there are uh, about uh, some factors, particularly uh, traffic loading, uh, the properties of the materials, and also the env environmental consideration. So for traffic loading, which is uh, from the vehicle, we need to consider a bit of the uh, tire loads and pressures, axle and wheel configuration, uh, load repetitions, that is the amount of uh, repetitive load from the vehicles, what is the traffic distribution, in particular the heavy vehicles, what are the vehicle speed, and then uh, all these loadings are normally uh, converted into an equivalent standard axle, uh, which is uh, normally a standard load of 80 kilonewtons. So uh, the second factor which we need to consider for design is the strength characteristics of paving materials and subgrade supporting capacity. Normally for subgrade, uh, we test for CBR, but uh, recently we, uh, we have equations converting the CBR into resilient modulus. And then uh, for paving materials such as crush aggregate, uh, crush aggregate sand, and also the asphalt pavement, we need to consider the resilient modulus. And the third factor which we need to consider is the environmental factor. How does the environment uh, influence the strength of these materials, uh, such as climatic condition, high and uh, low temperatures, and also rainfall? Because uh, temperature will affect the topmost layer, which is the asphalt layer, 
whereas rainfall will affect the lower layers which is unbound that is the crush aggregate sand and also the subgrade uh, so the higher the rainfall it will go through the pavement structure and will weaken the unbound layers okay so in summary this is what i have been talking to the on the three slides before so the flexible pavement design will need to consider traffic the climatic consideration and also the material properties so from there we will uh, choose the uh, materials for the pavement structure uh, so that we can assess the pavement condition and the uh, life of the pavement okay in design approach or how do we uh, methods of design there are two uh, two as uh, two design approaches being used to design pavement one is empirical and one is mechanistic so uh, these are the two main approaches empirical is based on observed performance and experiment for example you construct a test uh, a test pavement and then you uh, you let the vehicles go through the test pavement and observe the performance uh, whether the pavement can withstand the loadings from the vehicles that goes through it so from there we provide uh, a statistical equation uh, based on the performance so there is uh, no uh, not much properties uh, measurement on it except for statistical me measurement so therefore uh, the older guides such as s2 uh, guide uh, road note 29 road note 31 and the old uh, jkr malaysia arahan technique 5 stroke 85 is based on the empirical design approach okay which is based on observed performance and uh, experiment whereas the new or the current state of art for design is to use a mechanistic approach uh, this is based on mechanics of materials you need to test certain properties of the materials and then uh, from the materials you de uh, derive the design uh, design equations at the present moment there is no truly uh, mechanistic design method only a mechanistic empirical method because you need to have some uh, empirical studies on the uh, pavement performance uh, some examples of a mechanistic design approach is uh, shell uh, shell design method which is uh, originally in 1978 uh, developed in 1978 asphalt institute ms1 uh, developed in 1981 osroads the latest edition uh, uh, original is 2004 it's been updated regularly h2 2002 and the new jkr arahan technique 5 stroke 85 uh, which is revised in 2013 uh, so uh, this is what I've talked about uh, the empirical design method for H2 road test. It is uh, being done uh, on a test pav uh, pavement or test circuit, test loop. Uh, so vehicles are made to drive through this, uh, test vehicles are made to, uh, to drive through these test loads. So you observe whether there are crackings, rutting and other pavement distresses on this uh, uh, on this test loop uh, however there are weaknesses in this uh, sort of the, uh, empirical approach because it is uh, only uh, it is a localized experiment it is only uh, correct or relevant for the area where it is being tested and also it is only relevant for the amount of uh, uh, loadings and vehicular activities that goes through the test loop so uh, there is not much scientific approach uh, in this thing but it has been used for the last uh, 60 to 70 years uh, another uh, uh, limitation is the testing is only being done for a, lim a limited quantity of uh, or number of loadings only about 1 million excels but when you design you have only uh, you have only about uh, uh, you can design up to one mil 100 million excels 
Okay, so these are just uh, uh, a review. Eh? Uh, these are the monograph which is derived from the Estor road test, which is just a uh, empirical method. And you can see that it is almost similar to Arahan technique JKR 5 stroke 85, uh, which actually we, we based on, uh, uh, which we derive from uh, this nomograph from Estor. Okay, so this is the Estor design guide, which is empirical. And uh, among the oldest uh, or earliest empiric mechanistic design method is from Asphalt Institute in 1981. They produced their thickness uh, design MS1 manual. Uh, this is uh, the, the curve which uh, they derived from the mechanistic design approach. And uh, recently, uh, not so recent, about 20 years ago uh, in the uh, United States, they produce an uh, all-new design guide, the 2002 design guide, which is purely based on uh, the mechanistic design method. So in Australia also, 2004, they produced, uh, updated their mechanistic design guide. And our work in uh, Malaysia, DKR started in actually 2006 for the design of uh, flexible pavement structures. They only uh, use it in 2013, okay? Uh, only in 2013, they started uh, using it after six years of uh, comments from uh, other places. We go now into uh, what, uh, this, uh, what is mechanistic empirical flexible pavement design method. What it, what it is, uh, why do we need to design? So what is mechanistic design? Uh, it is the same principle used in designing structures. So you need to assume what is the uh, material to be used, and then what is the thickness, and what is the stiffness. If you do use design of structure, in design of uh, building structures, you need Young's modulus. Whereas in uh, design of pavement structures, you use a different uh, sort of modulus called resilient modulus or dynamic modulus whereby uh, it considers the repetitive loading uh, which uh, from the vehicles instead of static loading. So uh, after you have assumed this uh, material thickness, a model is used to calculate the reaction of the pavement to traffic loads. That means you calculate what is the stress, strains and the deflection almost similar to design of building structures. And then from this, uh, as, uh, from the reactions, particularly strain, uh, in pavement design, you require strain. Uh, the equations are used to de determine deflection and strains resulting from load imposed on the pavement. And then the strain is used in what we call a transfer equation to determine the number of allowable road repetitions and we compare to what is the actual load repetition. So it's almost similar to designing a building structure. You, uh, you determine what is the uh, forecasted or actual load repetition, and then you design a structure that can withstand the, uh, the, allow, uh, the load repetition. So why? I have talked about why we require mechanistic design actually. Uh, it allows a rapid analysis of the impact of changes in input items such as changes in materials and traffic. That means that if uh, you want to analyze a pavement structure uh, based on a new material such as a polymer modified material or a nano modified material, then you can test that material and uh, find the resilient modulus or dynamic modulus and then you can uh, reanalyze your structure to suit the change in material. And then uh, second thing, actual engineering properties are assigned in materials used in the pavement. Particularly, the engineering properties which are required is the resilient modulus or dynamic modulus and also the Poisson's ratio. And the pavement responses related to are related to the actual modes of payment failures are evaluated. That means you calculate the stress, strains and deflection and you relate it to the uh, failure such as what, uh, fatigue cracking and rutting. So the, the mechanistic 
design involves three main elements so it's quite uh, actually the the calculation if you use software is quite uh, simple there are only three main elements required input response model and transfer function uh, for the input you just need a uh, layer thickness material properties material properties in terms of modulus and also the poison ratio and traffic loadings what are the number of uh, excel repetitions you require for the load you have to estimate uh, what is the uh, number of excel repetition and then response model <coughs> so this normally we use multi-layer elastic theory or finite element to determine stress strain and deflections normally these are inbuilt in a computer uh, software <coughs> and then the third one is transfer function transfer functions are just equations that relate pavement responses or strains to the number of load repetitions to failure normally we consider uh, the load repetitions to failure for pavement uh, uh, fatigue failure and also rutting failure so this is the flow chart showing the uh, typical uh, design a mechanistic design approach so we we need to use inputs select uh, then we select the trial design calculate the stress strain and deflection uh, use the strain particularly in the performance prediction uh, for the distresses such as fatigue and rutting and then verify whether it is adequate for the uh, amount of traffic which we want to design so i just it's just repetitive uh just the we require input thickness traffic and uh, a bit on excel configuration so why we uh we have the problems of uh, different vehicles with different uh tire configurations so all this we normally try to convert into a equivalent 80 kilonewton esal or in uh, new softwares you can have the actual loadings from these vehicles uh, we can have devices installed on uh, underneath the bridges and culverts using uh, weigh in motion studies and then uh, weigh in motion devices and then we can uh, input them directly okay uh so this i have talked about uh convert into esal or load spectra for the traffic and then uh, this is how uh this uh, the pavement is modeled so uh, this is an example from the australian uh, guide normally uh the standard esal for australia is uh, a double uh, double uh excel with uh, about 1,800 mm uh, apart. And then we have uh, the tire pressure is assumed as uh, 0.75 MPA or 750 kPa uh, with a radius of 92.1. So this, uh, these are the uh, assumed uh, ESAL for the Australian uh, pavement design guide. And then materials characterization, okay, we require resilient modulus and poison ratio. <coughs> So resilient modulus is just uh, similar to Young's modulus, except that this applied stress is repetitive. So it's just stress over strain. But the stress is a uh, repetitive load instead of uh, static load. And then the poison ratio. So asphaltic concrete, normally we require the measurement of resilient modulus or dynamic modulus. We use uh this sort of uh equipment uh, okay utm uh, 25 repeated load uh, uh, actual test or we can have a dynamic modulus test to test the uh pav pavement samples for granular materials they demonstrate a non-linear behavior so it is affected by applied stress and confining pressure again uh when there is an increase in moisture content, it reduces the resilient modulus. So uh, this is a typical uh, behavior of a granular material, uh, which is normally for crusher run and sand. 
we use the equation uh, RMR, which is the resilient modulus is K theta uh, K1 theta K2, uh, which is uh, known also as the K theta equation. So this uh, will uh, determine the uh, what is the resilient modulus of the granular materials. Normally, it's being tested in a triaxial test with repetitive loading on it for granular materials and also the uh, sand and subgrade. So these are some of the typical values which use. As you can see, for asphaltic concrete, as the temperature increases, uh, such as for munition condition at 35 degrees Celsius, the resident modulus uh, will be at about 2,200, and also the poison ratio will increase. Eh? So uh, for crushed stone, sand, and clay soils, normally they are not affected by temperature, but they are more affected by the moisture content. So we can as assume certain figures, uh, but we have to take um, into account of the moisture content. So the input of a uh, structural model, which is uh, for the used for the calculation of stress and strain, uh, normally we require the input of the material properties uh, from the previous uh, uh, previous slides, which is the resilient modulus and the uh, Poisson's ratio. So normally we use a multi-layer elastic model, which is depicted, depicted here. Uh, so these are actually uh, shown, but uh, normally we use a computer software to calculate the stresses and strain, but we need to input the uh, resilient modulus Poisson ratio and also the thickness for the uh, for each layer. We can also use, uh, so these are the, some of the typical uh, strain calculation. So uh, although the equations uh, look simple, but to calculate this require the computer software. So we need to calculate the strains based on the uh, resilient modulus, poison ratio, and also the stresses. So the structural model which we use, the multi-layer elastic model, will calculate particularly the critical uh, location of critical strains, eh? the, the strains at critical location, such uh, for example, the most critical one is the uh, at the bottom of the asphaltic concrete layer because it causes fatigue cracking. Okay, the strain at the bottom of the asphaltic concrete layer will cause fatigue cr uh, cracking and also the uh, stresses on the granular, uh, on the subgrade, uh, stresses on the uh, subgrade, which will cause permanent deformation or rutting. So these are the two critical areas which we uh, normally calculate uh, at the uh, bottom of the asphaltic concrete layer and on top of the subgrade, because this will uh, normally use for the fatigue and rutting calculations. The stresses which we calculate will be used in the uh, transfer functions or equations which relate pavement uh, uh, life in terms of number of axial repetitions to failure. I'll show you an uh, example of the, uh, this. So uh, these are the two main distress which we are going to try to calculate. Eh? Uh, the fatigue cracking and uh, rutting. How long or how much axial repetition will cause failure in terms of fatigue cracking and rutting. Normally, uh, we for this uh, talk, I'll use example of Asphalt Institute. Asphalt Institute failure criteria used in the equations will result in fatigue cracking of 20% of total area, fatigue cracking and rutting not greater than half inch or 12.7 mm. So this is the equation for fatigue cracking. Uh, so the asphalt fatigue life, you need to input the tensile strain, which is your calculated area, and also the resilient modulus. So uh, the values which we have tested is input into this design to find the allowable, uh, the ma maximum number of repetition for the asphalt fatigue life and also the rutting failure criterion is a different formula. So from this, we will know what is the uh, rutting failure life, okay? Okay, and uh, a bit on computer software. 
most of the calculations now are being done by the so uh, computer software. We have certainly uh, Everstress, Canlayer, and Dama. So for finite element, we have MishPave and Illipave. So you can search through Google to find uh, this uh, software. But for certainly you need to buy, I think it costs about uh, $10,000 Australian. So this software integrates uh, the uh, overall uh, model with transfer function and calculate the maximum allowable Excel repetition for the assumed thickness and material use. Okay, uh, I'll, I, uh, I just showed that this is just the front, uh, front cover for CanPay, uh, which is actually uh, freely available in the website. You can, you can Google CanPay and you can try on your own uh, if you need to know more you can come uh, to my uh, say workshop sometimes i do a workshop on this and then uh, so in conclusion uh, i just talk about mechanistic design which is being currently uh, advocated for use in arahan teknik jalan 5 stroke 85 and uh, in arahan teknik jalan 5 stroke 85 they just uh, direct uh, they have derived the pavement layers or pavement configuration according to the uh, mechanistic design. And finally, if you need to know more, you can uh, refer to my book, which is written for Malaysian condition, uh, which is available uh, through UIT Press, or you can contact me. So with that, I end my talk. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any Q&A, we have uh, at the end of this session. So I think Dr. Karizan may begin. So you can see. Okay, sorry for the technical problem. Okay, sorry. Okay, my name is Karizan. I will talk about asphalt design. So this third here is the presentation outline for my session today, which is I will cover on asphalt design. And then the method of martial mix design and the real deal in a swap mix, then in the importance of pavement innovation and quality inspection of a swap mixture. Okay, if you can see this slide, actually you can see about 95% of natural roadways are surfaced with asphalt, right? So we drive on asphalt roadway most every day. So you may have seen asphalt being laid on a roadway which is truck load of hot meat as well assigned to be uh, to the side and they uh, then compacted okay but what is uh what is in asphalt actually okay so maybe you know you, you drive on roadway every day but you don't know what is in asphalt mix actually so typically asphalt mix is uh made up of 95 percent of aggregate which is consists of cost aggregate fill aggregate Okay, fine aggregate, sorry, and filler, which is we are well versed with cost and fine aggregate, which is uh, used to uh, provide interlocking, okay, to cattle loading and then distribute loading to the underlying layer. But what about filler? So, filler actually to increase density and also fill voids in the bituminous mix. What about 5%? And the 5% would be asphalt bitumen, which is we use the asphalt bitumen to bind those material to provide stable, firm and strong mix. Okay, so since we are using a uh, roadway every day, so what is uh, your expectation for our roadway? So we, uh, we all know about pavement. Pavement is single most expensive component of the highway system. So of course we need Okay, we expect our road, uh, roadway can be uh, strong to carry traffic load, okay, which is stable under uh, different climatic condition, and of of course for safe can provide safe and smooth for road users. Okay, but then what is uh, in real situation? So after a few years or maybe few months, okay, our pavement or our roadway of a uh, occurred pavement failure, right? So for example, we can see crocodile crab everywhere, right? We can see stripping, we can see rutting due to willow, and we can see depression. And another one would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is another frame from function which is fishing, right? We see spot hole everywhere, right? Okay. So back to the basic hot meat asphalt meat design. So what is objective of HMA actually? Okay, actually uh, HMA hot meat asphalt which is consists of aggregate and 
bitumen, which is premix of mixed design, which is uh, we conduct uh, HMA to develop economical blend of aggregate and asphalt binder that meets design requirement. Okay, Historic, uh, historically, mixed design method uh, start with Marshall and Wing method, and in 1995, which is new method of mixed design, which is we call it super paved mixed design, uh, introduced into it based on Marshall and Wing method. Okay, the primary difference between these three methods, between Marshall, between WIM, and between super pavement design is actually on uh, the machine to uh, use to compact, which is Marshall, we use impact hammer. Okay, WIM, we use kneading compactor, and for the super pave, we use uh, directory compactor. All right. So this is HMA desirable properties. So no matter which design procedure uh, is going to be used, so we need to consider mixture that place in the road we must meet certain requirements. So this requirement, sufficient asphalt binder, sufficient stability, sufficient avoids and sufficient workability. We need to fulfill these uh, properties in order to get the strong mix, strong performance of road, our roadway. So sufficient asphalt binder yeah, to make sure yeah. our equipment are durable, right? And suitable, stable under traffic load. So to to, to cater traffic demand. So our mix must, uh, must be stable under traffic load. And for the sufficient airworks, we have upper limit and lower limit, which is upper limit is to prevent excessive environmental damage. And for the lower limit, to so allow room for initial densification due to traffic. And the last one is sufficient workability. So we have to make sure our mix is can uh, can allow, can permit placement and proper compaction without segregation. Okay, for I uh, move to the Marshall mid design method, which is Marshall mid design method developed by Bruce uh, Marshall for the Mississippi Highway in the late 30s. So this is uh, listed here, the procedure, the step of the Marshall mixture design. So we have 11 steps here. So start with material selection. We have aggregate and binder selection, okay, which is here we are using granite for the aggregate and then penetration is uh, penetration 60, 70 grade. We use in uh, Malaysia currently. Okay, for the gradients, uh, gradation selection, which is mixed start, we have AC14. Okay, asphalt wearing cost, asphalt wearing cost 20 and asphalt wearing 28. So for the aggregate proportion, and then next we need to determine blended specific gravity, we need to determine uh, mixing temperature, and then next we have to prepare three compact sample at different binder content. Next is determine density of compacted sample, then we have to conduct martial stability and flow test. Okay, next, number nine, we, we have to calculate volumetric properties of compact sample to uh, to complete the martial form. So from martial form, we have to tabulate and plot test result. The last one, we have to determine the OBC optimal bitumen content. So uh, as uh, as I mentioned earlier, martial mixture design is a mixture design method, which is we design to develop economical blend. So in order uh, and to make sure we our blend is uh, fulfill the specification, especially from JKR spec. Okay, so for the step number one, this is uh, this slide show the basic aggregate testing, which is uh, we have to fulfill uh, by required by JKR measure. So this is list of type of test we have to conduct, and then this is for binder testing, right? Okay, and then the second step will be gradation limits. Okay, so how gradation limits is uh, we have to, okay, normally contractor needs to propose job mix formula for each type of mix, okay? So normally contractor propose the job mix formula for each mix required for road construction. Then we have, we just prepare on the basis of testing. So based on, let's say we have wearing cost, let's say the contractor uh, request for AC10. So we have to, prepare job mix formula for AC10, okay, and then follow the their design binder content. For example, AC10, we have, we should start with 5% to 7% of binder content. Okay, for the next, uh, for the next step, which is aggregate proportion. So we have many size of uh, aggregate, right? So we have to develop trial blends from different stock pine, so different size. So from here, 
So when we have the proportion of uh, the, the 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 best proportion of uh, trial blend, so we use this uh, proportion to establish aggregate specific gravity. So we have to calculate blended uh, aggregate specific gravity. So from uh, Based on these two results, which is we have, we need to conduct SG cost, specific gravity of cost aggregate, and also specific gravity of fine aggregate. Okay, next, in order to mix and compact uh, the sample, so we need to conduct viscosity test. So viscosity test, uh, we conduct at 135 and 165 to in order to check their compaction temperature range and also mixing compaction temperature. So for the next step, which is compaction. So for the compaction, we have to mix the aggregate and bitumen, all right? So when uh, after mix the aggregate and bitumen, we just use loose moisture sample to compact at 100 diameter, 100 millimeter diameter with 60 millimeter thickness for, seven, uh, for 75 blows for each phase. Uh, normally, we have to prepare three samples for each binder content. Okay, for the next step, okay, we have to determine density of compacted sample. So after prepare sample from the previous uh, step, uh, normally sample is cooled at room temperature, which is normally we left at 24 hours after compaction. Okay, so after then, uh, we conduct the bulk specific gravity density by measure weight, uh, weight in air, weight in water, and saturated surface weight condition. All right, for the next step is martial stability and flow test. Okay, for the martial stability and flow test, normally we need to condition a uh, sample in water bath for 30 to 40 minutes, okay, at 60 degree temperature. Then we conduct, which is we, call, we conduct martial stability and flow test by using this machine. Okay, so normally this machine, uh, uh, the compression load we apply to the sample, then we read, uh, we, we, uh, we, we collect the data from the maximum load before failure, taken together with the flow. So from this machine, we get a stability and flow test uh, result. Okay, this is uh, step number nine, which is we have to calculate volumetric properties. This is final version of completed martial form. So we can see here, this is density, okay, uh, compacted density. This is uh, loose uh, density. So we have a uh, few volumetric properties here and also stability and flow test uh, result, sorry. So from this form, so we have to plot uh, graph, okay, based on this uh, result, which is density, stability, flow, what's in total mix and what fit with bitumen versus bitumen content. Okay, next. Okay, next is the uh, determination of RBC. So, in order to determine optimum bitumen content, based on previous slide, we have to plot graph, right? So, from here, we have to uh, plot density, stability, VTM, VFB, flow, and stiffness. Okay, so in order to uh, to determine the uh, OBC, optimum bitumen content, we have to take the average of five density, stability, VTM, VFP, and also flow from the graph. For example, okay, this is from GKR specification. Okay, to, in order to determine OBC, we have to select the maximum, the peak, okay, a peak curve taken from maximum density a peak curve from stability, so we denote as A, and then from stability, we denote as B. For VTM, okay, if you uh, look at, at this uh, standard, VTM is VIM equal to 4%. We just consider it's a wearing cost, so 4% mid-range, uh, we denote as C. And then for the VRP, it will be 75% for wearing cost, so mid-range of 75%. Here is, we denote as D. And for the last one is E uh, from the flow. Okay, flow equal to 3 mm from the flow graph. So mid reach at 3 mm, we, we draw this line and drag to the uh, bitumen content. So you will get E. So from this result, A plus B plus C plus B plus E, you divide by 5, you will get the optimum bitumen content. Okay, let's say in this uh, case, we get 5.1% uh, OBC. Okay, 
So the last step, which is we have to verify our OBC is comply or not comply with the specification. So we need to compare uh, based on OBC obtained from previous step. So we just, by using the same graph, similar graph, we just drag from this graph at 5.1%. Uh, so we, when, you, when you draw this line from 5.1% and you will get the result, and then you just write down here. So let's say it's a density, okay, stability. Let's say 5.1, you will get 13 something, right? So this is stability, 1325 kilogram. So if you look compared with the specification for welding cost, so uh, you can see that this is comply with the spec, all right? So a similar trend for this, uh, for other volumetric property, for the flow, stiffness, Awards and VFP. Okay, so by using 5.5% uh, previous OBC, so you just compare with the specification. If this condition, we can we can consider all volumetric properties is passed, which is comply with the standard. So it can conclude that our OBC, our optimum metamorphic content use uh, can be used for production in plant. But what happened if fail? Let's say stability fail. Okay, the others is uh, past. So what is, what uh, we can consider if one of uh, these parameter is failed. So if fail or fail to comply, so we have to look at back at job mix formula, which is we need to redesign. Okay, so that's all for Marshall mix design method. All right, so now we uh, move to the asphalt mix design in a real deep. Okay, the problems, okay. So you can see from this slide, okay, the problems of okay, in Malaysia, this is reality, okay, reality in Malaysia, reality jalan raja in Malaysia, right? Say so, jalan rosak, tak pernah selesai, jalan rosak isu malas, okay, so every, every, not every day, so maybe every month, other day issue, uh, problems, uh, failure, human failure occur in Malaysia, right? Okay, so, I just show you one video, which is payment failures, uh, related to writing, okay? Okay, what will happen during the rainy days? Can you imagine? Okay, right feet with, uh, with water can cause can cause what they call hydrothermia. Okay, so it condition this con this case the condition very dangerous, very hazardous because this right tend to pull your vehicle towards the rock pump. So how it occurs actually? So how it occur? All right. So I stop this video. Okay, so how it occurs, so you can see the real, in real, uh, real day in asphalt pigment. Okay, over the years, okay, I just summarize what, uh, what actually uh, pigment failure occur in Malaysia. Why? Okay, uh, over the years, the conventional asphalt mix, okay, have performed satisfactory well on a wide range of road. However, due to this, due to um, what we call it, uh, Higher, tri uh, higher traffic, okay, high traffic volume, higher tidal pressures, and also our climatic condition, okay. The road structure have directed more uh, rapidly uh, compared to expected, maybe experience premature pavement failures, okay. So why it uh, occur? Okay, so the first thing is asphalt binder. Why? Because asphalt binder plays an important role in uh, determining uh, in road performance, for example, okay. Why? Because asphalt binder has limitation to temperature. It will soften at high temperature and crack when at low temperature because of uh, asphalt binder does not have good engineering properties, okay. So, for example, this conventional asphalt binder, due to aging process, the binder becomes stiff and brittle. So, from there, you will lead the premature payment failures. So the second point is uh, our conventional asphalt binder does not able to deal with the current traffic volumes and also load uh, as a turn on due to high traffic. Okay, so this has become a big challenge to our authority to maintain the existing road network. 
So, uh, in addition, our nation, uh, our, our government also spend million of ringgit to repair and maintain the road. Therefore, we need to increase. So, they increase the quality of asphalt mix design to enhance performance of the pavement. So, uh, some research uh, that uh, already done, but by, by first, actually, on polymer modified bitumen by using rubber crumb, latex, and currently is a waste, uh, waste plastic, so in order to enhance the performance of pigment performance and also nano polymer. Okay, then the next uh, would be the last point. Okay, the importance of pigment evaluation and quality inspection of asphalt mixture. So why this evaluation, this, uh, we need to conduct testing, okay, to evaluate uh, pigment performance, to inspect the quality of asphalt mixture. Why? Because of from this uh, evaluation, we can provide important information about HMA, about hot meat asphalt performance and their, uh, their service life. And the second one, from this, from the existing payment structure, when we conduct this testing, the, uh, the inspection quality, so we can confirm their structural adequacy. So if the, the thickness is adequate or not, all right? So we can help uh, to determine why it failed. Okay, why it failed and how it will perform it, where is maintenance alternative, okay? And this, the third one is determine the best and the most economical pavement design and rehabilitation approach based, uh, based on annual cost analysis. So, this, this three point is important of pavement relation and quality inspection of our smart mixture. Okay, this is some uh, project that we are involved in uh, road repair, which is patching. On um, field testing, we conduct a, in Kelang Valley actually, road skid resistant and surface section sand patch, which is in this uh, project, we just compare on martial properties of various type of coal mix, correct? And then uh, we, we compare with the standard hot premix with various type of coal mix that are available in Malaysia, okay? Okay, and then we also involved in coring sample, okay, coring sample project uh, in Pahang, where this is a picture in Pahang, all right, and also Kelantan and for sure Kelangwili, all right. So from this coring sample, we conduct few testing on safe analysis, density, their, punya, uh, their vitamin content, and also strength properties, all right. So uh, this is uh, one example of analysis or lab testing. Okay, so from this we can see that uh, the sample, the sample is complied or not complied with the standard. Right. So we just uh, guide them how to uh, uh, check their uh, their quality. Okay, their their quality to 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 be proceed or not. All right. Okay, so this is uh, laboratory and field testing that what we have. So actually, we have already in this lab. For example, we have in, uh, instrument for irrigate testing, right? So this is basic testing that we have in our lab, and also bitumen testing, right? And we also have the at once at once uh, binder testing or rheological testing, which is the SR. Uh, we have uh, RTFO and also we have uh, pressure aging vessel, okay. And we also have our Marshall and Super Pave made design. Yeah, we have Marshall and Super Pave geratory compactor, right? So this is geratory compactor. So this is, as you can see, this is Super Pave geratory compactor compared to Marshall uh, sample. Okay, this is Super Pave sample, this is Marshall sample. So, um, we have at once uh, uh, testing here, equipment here. Okay, uh, then we also have instrument for performance testing, complete, okay, complete. We have here TM5 because of from TM5, we can conduct resilient modulus. We can conduct IDT, indirect test strength. We have uh, also, we can conduct quick test, dynamic modulus, okay, and also we have SPT dynamic modulus, okay. And then we have stability flow test, fatigue testing, and also APA, okay? APA rating test in order to check uh, rating problem uh, as I mentioned in, uh, I showed to uh, in video just now. Okay, so previous uh, pavement study where we have done, this is just a sikit yang sempat which is on my research on polymer modified bitumen. 
and currently I'm on uh, I work out on self healing, which is uh, and also stomachic asphalt, scoping asphalt. We also have right here where we recycle asphalt pigment and etc. And then project involved is just a few that I can list here. We have uh, uh, involved in lab and field analysis for comic as well. We, and then also comic speeching on make design performance relations and currently uh, I'm involved with uh, lab and field analysis uh, testing, field testing on crumb rubber and latex uh, modified as well. Okay, this is some awards, um, training and workshop collaboration with, industry, and with international university and industries. So currently we have uh, collaborate with Mahidol University and also some uh, industry, JKR, KBC, and MTD. And this is uh, our awards. And this is industry training workshop, okay, that we attend. And also we uh, we conduct, okay, in our, in ISM lah, ISM. Okay, this is, for example, training workshop on asphalt mill design. So this workshop actually open to all academician or industry. So if you're interested, maybe you can contact us, all right? So thank you. That's all for me. So thank you for your attention. So if you need help, if you need us uh, help or interest with our uh, workshop or training, you can call us, okay? Call me or the Prokanil. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ikarizan. Okay, thank you for the very informative and interesting topic as well. So Dr. Karizan and Prof. Ayru Tekamen are very a great team in doing this kind of job with regard to pavement. So I open the floor for any question. Feel free to ask anything. We have six minutes left. Okay, while waiting for the questions, uh, I think uh, I will do some sort of marketing as well while waiting for the questions. Uh, our lab and also faculty of civil engineering lab, we actually have quite complete and advanced actually when it comes to soil and highway, like soil and highway, because we have four units of size as a test, right, Dr. Karizan? Yeah, yeah. Four units and three units fully auto, fully auto. Okay, that's the question here. Can you answer that, Dr. Eka or Prof? Prof Kamila, Prof Kamila. Prof how equation for converting CBR to residual modules is, is developed, Prof? Okay. Uh, how equation for converting CBR to resilient modulus is developed. Uh, normally, they uh, what they do is they test the CBR of uh, the same sample and they, then they test the resilient modulus for the same type of soil uh, together. So they do to test, uh, they do for different types of uh, uh, different types of soil and then uh, they do for uh, both tests and then they try to correlate between the CBR and the resilient modulus. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, resilient modulus is just uh, 10, the equation is 10 times CBR. That means if your CBR is uh, 5, so you just multiply by 10, so you get 50, uh, your CB, uh, resilient modulus is 50 MPA. It, uh, uh, the equation that is uh, the simplest equation they found uh, is just uh, resilient modulus is 10.3 times uh, CBR value. As I've said earlier, if the CBR is 5, you just mu multiply by 10, you get 50 MPA. So the resilient modulus is 50 MPA. Uh, there are many other equations also. Uh, some is uh, a bit complicated, but uh, normally that is the simplest. I think that is the one being used in by JKR. Uh, at least not at ten. Exactly, it's ten point three. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prof. I think that answered the question. We have two more questions from the Facebook. What is presented opinion on design and application rubber material in asphalt premix design? Any speakers? Okay, uh, thank you, you, you Shairi. All right, okay, from uh, my, okay, uh, my opinion on design application of the material is for premium design. Okay, currently I'm involved in, uh, with the project of uh, rubber crumb latex and also uh, natural rubber latex. So from this uh, project, okay, conclude that uh, natural rubber latex uh, is better compared to rubber crumb the premise design. 
Okay, another one question, Dr. Eka. You did mention about your research in polymer modified bitumen. What type of polymer that has been used in your current study? That one. Okay, thank you. Uh, All right. Okay, so about research in polymer modified bitumen. So the type of polymer that uh, currently are used actually on uh, fiber. All right. On uh, currently I work on nano actually nano polymer, which is using nano polyacrylic. And also working on fiber and currently focus on self healing uh, modified bitumen using uh, steel wool, right? Steel wool, okay? Uh, steel wool. So not, no, currently, uh, my project is involved in steel wool fiber, which is uh, uh, try to apply to uh, for the self healing mechanism. Okay, I think that's about it. I answered the question as well. So, any more questions? We have one minute. Therefore, I need to write up all this. Uh, before we end this session, I would like to to give a thank you all the participants for being here with us today. Also to the speakers for those uh, for the informative uh, talk today. And then before I end the session, I would like to mention again that we also provide testing material and we are going to do some sort of uh, training module with the JKR also RIM, Road of Engineering Association Malaysia, as well as any other players soon. Testing and module, training module, some sort of like that. With that, thank you again for being with us today. Thank you.